Yes, and we are live. It's Tuesday. Hmm. I can already see people right in the comment section um, sharing with us exactly. Yes, you're welcome. Tell me where you are logging in from and tell me if this is your first time, put your hashtag while we start to connect through other um, places. So today we're looking at 12 skills, 12 skills your child will need to learn before they turn 12. Who is ready for this class? Who is ready for this class? All right, so who is ready for this class? If you are, let me see your comments right in the comment section. 12 skills your child will need to learn before they turn 12. All right, so um, part of the conversation that we're starting for this is how to you know, um, raise children who actually have the right skills to become the kind of adult that we all wish. All right. Let me see your comment in the comment section. If you can hear me, if you can see me, let me see you comment in the comment section. Tell me where you are streaming live from. I'm streaming live from the capital city, Abuja. All right. I'm, I'm streaming live from my home office. If this is your first time streaming here, um, put a hashtag and say first time. By the way, um, as a way of introduction, my name is Wendy Ologi. And I'm the founder of the Intentional Parent Academy. Okay, so um, let's get ready and log into other communities and then we'll be here. All righty, answering live. Um, you live from the UK, watching from Abuja. I can see you. I see you guys. And we are live now. Now, let me just start this conversation by saying there is no gain saying on it. There are developmental stages. There is what your child must know for every stage of their lives. Very important. You know, we must understand that we can't get it twisted, yeah? We must understand that we're going to have this conversation whether we like to have it or not. <laughs> because when it comes to conversation on building skills, I don't know why, you know, there's, there's a lot of, um, um, you know, back and forth on it, but that is one of the reasons why we're having this conversation today. And if you're joining me for the first time, like I said, my name is Wendy Ologe. Let's connect to our um, community on Facebook. All right. So, hello. And we are here. So, we're here every Tuesday at 2 p.m. sharing with you different aspects of parenting. We already have 30 people live on our YouTube channel. Invite your friends, your family. It's going to be an awesome session. Trust me. This particular session today, it's going to come with a lot of, um, you know, a lot of stuff for you to learn. So if you're just joining me for the first time, let me see your comment in the comment section. And I can see that we have quite a number of people who are joining us for the first time, you know, in this conversation. Welcome here. Now, let me start by saying that 12 year old is a big transition for your child. And one of the biggest problems, challenges that we have with parenting is that we like the emergency thing. I have said over and again that parenting isn't an emergency. No, you knew when you became a parent, you know that your child is going to be under your care for 18 years. You understand quite a number of things. So it's not like you just woke up and they told you that you became a parent and that your child is 13. But unfortunately, what many of us do is that the first time, once we just remember, oh, I have a 13-year-old now, and then boom, we start running all around, we start, you know, getting agitated, and every other thing that comes with it. Now, the conversation of the day is, what are those things that my child should learn? I hear some parents, they say things like, oh, my child is still too small. I don't want to, I, I don't need to join the academy. Oh, my child is still too small. I, I don't need to read any parenting book. 
Oh, I don't need anything and all of that. I'm going to be sharing with you proven researches that have been done over the years, right? And have proven that parenting actually starts the very first day that you start raising your child. I hear quite a number of parents when you talk about the, par the children taking responsibility. The first thing you hear them say is, hey, I will wait, you know, when uh, um, my, my time, when, it, um, when, it, when I'm ready, all right? So we say things like when the child, you know, grows, it's, it's, not, it's not here yet here. Now, let me just talk a bit about 12-year-olds. 12 12-year-olds 12 is a big transition time for your child. At that child, there's a transition physically, there's a transition mentally, there's a transition emotionally, and there's a transition socially. Now, if you're not able to deal with the things you need to deal with and the things that your child needs to learn before they transition from 12 to 13, you begin to struggle. We've actually had a class right on our YouTube community where we share 13 skills every child should learn before they turn 13. You want to actually catch replay on that and you know it, it may actually get very bumpy puberty is usually in full swing at 12 so if you're not prepared if your child is not prepared it's going to get bumpy i see quite a number of people by the time their children start turning 12 they start struggling seriously because what you used to know doesn't work anymore because you're not even ready for that time now if you don't prepare a child for this stage your child will struggle as a teenager. Now, life skills are learning to learn skills. That's what it's called. Life skills are learning to learn skills. Learning to learn skills. That's what we call life skills. And these are the things that your children will need. And these can be developed through intentional parenting, through your everyday parenting, provided you are intentional enough. You would actually be able to produce, be able to give, this, you know, skills to your child. We're going to be sharing with you 12 of those skills that your child will need to have been equipped with if we thought they even turned 12 in the first place. Now, you might not be ready to teach your child about life, but sadly, life is never going to stop. So life is never going to stop if we aren't ready. So the fact that you're not ready or your child is not ready for life doesn't stop life. Life doesn't seek permission for readiness for exams. I, 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 like, I like that a lot. So life is never going to seek a permission, never going to give you a notice for the life lessons, for, for, for the exams that you need to learn. So it gives you tests every minute of your life, whether you're ready, whether you're not. I've seen the argument of, oh, the times are hard, times are bad. Oh, our children cannot do the things that you know we did and all of that. Just hold it there. One of the things that you must understand is that you're not going to be there all the time for your children. Now, you're not babying children. You are actually raising adults. I want you to say that, put that in the comment section. I am not babying children. I am raising adults. The moment you understand that you're raising adults, you're not really raising children. You're raising adults. You're preparing your children for adulthood. The moment you understand that, the moment you begin to rethink your parenting strategies. Because parenting is more about the skills that you build your child than the things that you're, you know, screaming and jumping up and down all the, all the places and all of that. So we started the No Yelling Challenge yesterday. And part of what I was teaching the parents in the No Yelling Challenge is that an unskilled child is a body to you and to your, to the world entirely. But the first burden is to you. An unskilled child is a burden to you. An unskilled child is a burden to you. You're not babying children, you're raising adults. That's what parenting is. You're raising adults. We're responsible for teaching our children life skills, that will help them succeed and contribute to the society large. It's our responsibility. People have come to argue that if whatever it is that happens to a child isn't necessarily the parent's fault. I beg to disagree. One of the things I have found is that research has proven over and again that parenting 
circumstances, environment, culture, value system is what makes a person. And many of the times, some of these things, we just inherit them and they just become us. So one of the questions you want to ask yourself today is, do I even really know what it takes? I said, I shared one time that novices do not raise genesis. And some people said, oh, do you have to be a genus before you raise it? No, no, no. It didn't say you need to be a genus. It says that you, you can't be a novice and you raise a genus. We're currently reading a book called The Outplayers and in level three in the Inner Circle program. And you know, part of it is read this comment. Novices don't read Genesis. And it is straight this comment and put side by side two people who have very high IQ, Genesis by nature. Unfortunately, Logan, who had more than 63 IQ you know, level, more than Upham Hair, who is a bit lower in IQ, and also a Genesis, ended up becoming a bouncer in a club. What was the difference between him and Upham Hair? Upham Hair ended up becoming someone who became an inventor, actually produced one of the weapons of war that was used in the Second World War. Now, the question you want to ask yourself is, what made the difference? It was so glaring, parenting advantage. What advantage do you have for raising a child? Like I said, I said that an unskilled child, did somebody help me capture that in the comment section? An unskilled child is a burden to you and the society at large. So what we call in the inner circle, the foolish virgin. Unfortunately, many of us are just interested in our children, just obeying us. Everything we talk about is obey me, obey you, obey and obey. Please don't get me wrong. Obedience is not wrong, but that's the only thing we make emphasis on. Without building children who are skilled, then we will actually destroy these children. Many children go into the world unprepared. For the reality of adulting, there's a reality of adulting. And it's been proven again and again that children who do chores are better in life. And research have actually shown that they are more successful as an early adulthood. I'm going to share that as we keep going. Facebook community, can you hear me? can see your comments. Now, 12 skills your child will need to know before they turn 12. This is what your child needs to know. If your child has a learning disability, that's a different conversation. If your child is developing normally and you do not need to meet a physician for anything, then you need to listen to me. Many of the times I've heard things like, oh, um, children, you know, we should not compare children with aid milestones and all of that. Oh, because of that and all of that. And I asked the question, if your 12 year old is not able to feed himself, wouldn't that be a, a challenge to you? Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be something that should worry you? So there are skills that you must, a child should learn by the time that they are turning 12 that would actually help them that would actually help them to be able to succeed in life. Um, I was telling the parents in the inner circle about the parenting systems, the Jewish systems use. And when people say, oh, there are no templates to this parenting thing. Oh, you don't need to learn this parenting thing. Oh, you just need to do it the way that you were taught. And unfortunately for us, how we were taught um, you know, if you if you give our parents even want us to do better, and then we just want to replicate whatever it is that our parents are doing, isn't that a failure on our side? And most of us were not taught right. Forgive me if that hit wrong. Now, number one thing that your child will need to learn before they turn twelve is that they need to learn to do basic house chores. That's where I'm going to start from. We have so many 12-year-olds who can do nothing at home. If you're listening to me and you feel that, oh, no, my 12-year-old can just sit in one corner and do nothing and all of that, like we have argued, oh, well, 
the choice is yours. My message, my own is to share with you what you need to learn. Why do you think your child, why is it even, you know, a thing? It's improving that children who learn how to do chores as early as four have higher self-esteem. Mm -hmm. It's also been proven that children who, in fact, there was a research. Let me read the research for you. Children who do chores have higher self-esteem, high responsibility, and uh, they are better able to deal with frustrations, know how to delay gratifications. This was a research by Matthew Roseman. It shows that involving children in house chores early in life, as early as three, can have a positive impact later in life. In fact, he says, that she says that the best predictor of young adult success in their mid twenties was that they participated in household tasks as young as three years, both academically and otherwise in their earlier career, they performed better. They actually put it, they actually put a number of young people and followed them from when they were born to when they became young adults. And then they also realized that it wasn't just about doing chores. It was about when they started to do those chores. Amazing. The research shows that the best result was gotten when they actually started to do those chores, when the children started to do it at three. That when they started to do it at 15, it backfired. So that children who started to do chores between the ages of 13 and above Actually, it actually backfired. They had worse results than children who didn't do chores. Harvard actually says that children who learn to do chores early while growing up uh, become happier in life, that they have better mental health. These studies are out there. Do your research, you're going to find them. It's not about when you log in, right? There are researches done by high profile people proven and they are out there. It also says that there's a surge in brain development when a child can actually do chores. So they perform better, usually. In fact, we did a, a small survey in my children's primary school. Ms. Bakole is here watching me. Ms. Bakole was my children's proprietor, all right, Banky's primary school. And we did a, a survey. Ms. Bakole had a lot of so We did a survey on the children whose fathers were involved in parenting. We found out that the children whose fathers were involved in parenting did perform better than the children whose fathers were not. That's one. Two, we found out that the children who were responsible at home, did chores, did other things, performed better than any other child in the, all of the streets from grade one to grade six. So that was a small you know, place. You can try it in your schools, in anywhere, and all of that. I have also started the survey right in secondary school with my children. The more responsible your child is, the more there is a surge in brain development because the brain requires a lot of struggle to actually be able to learn. It also says that these children had better relationship. Now, every relationship thrives on the ability to give. Now, we're raising children who cannot give. They can't help, they're entitled, so they can't give. So they're going to have issues with their relationships. Now, let me say this. Children don't do chores because no one taught them how to increase. Their, there are three reasons why children don't do chores. Number one, no one taught them how to increase their responsibility quotient. No one taught them how to increase their responsibility. So there's a lack of judgment. They don't understand why they should stand up and pick up something that is in the room. They don't understand why they should. So, so there, there's, no, there's no responsibility quotient, AKA responsibility. It doesn't exist. Number two, these children have become so self-absorbed only about themselves and their own need. No one taught them about honor. No one taught them about the next person. No one taught them that they actually should pick 
whatever to help the next person. They don't understand it. That's the second reason why children don't help in the home. Then the third reason is that they lack impulse control. They lack impulse control. So number one is lack of responsibility quotient, low responsibility quotient. Number two is self-absorbed about their own selves and their own needs. So there's no, they've not been taught empathy. Number three is lack of impulse control. They can't kind of control impulse. They want what they want, how they want it. Chores are not gratifying. So of course, it's not something that, you know, they quickly want to actually get in and do. So these are the three reasons why children really don't do chores. So when parents come to me and they say, oh, I have been telling my children, oh, that they need to do chores. I've actually been preaching all the things that I've saying. It's not true. It's, 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 it's because you have not built skills. It takes skills to be able to actually do these things. Part of the things that we teach in the Inner Circle program is how to raise a child whose responsibility quotient is high. So you do it with everyday activities. We also teach how to actually build a system of honor and empathy. If your children honor you, they will actually do a lot of things. So honor is a higher, is a, is a higher calling than obedience. Time, time will not permit me to share that. The parents in the inner circle understand exactly what I, what I say when I say honor is a higher calling to obedience. So the game is honor. The game is not obedience. So everything we're thinking about is, I told you, you did not do. Obey me. You're not obeying me. You're not saying what I'm doing. A child does not have the ability to actually give to you what it is that you're asking for. And these traits are developed, they are taught, they are skills. You don't beat it into a child, you don't yell it into a child. You teach a child how to increase their responsibility. You teach a child impulse control. You teach a child not to be entitled. You teach a child, you teach a child how to judge. Very important. So let us start with number one. Let us start with number one. Number, number two, sorry. So we said do basic house chores. One of the things that you must do for your child before they talk is that they must learn to do. When I mean basic house chores, we're talking about laundry, sweeping, mopping, all right? I have removed the ability to cook to another skill because cooking is a skill on its own. By the time your child is turning 12, your child should have known how to cook. Oh, yes. Because there are skills that your child will need to learn or we need to be able to manage puberty with that they need to learn at that cooking place. So it's not really about the show, oh, my child can cook this or can... Mm -mm. If your child cannot, as puberty hits them from 13 at the peak, they get confused. A lot of you have children who were very doing so well, you know, and all of that. By the time they hit 13, especially academically, 13, 14, they begin to struggle, 15, because they were not prepared for the time. Number three, your children at 12 should learn basic travel skills. I know that this conversation is um, going to be very interesting, especially on the basic travel skills, but it's a skill you teach. You don't just wake up and tell your children, oh, go and travel. No, you teach it. Um, I remember that part of our webinars in the inner circle is teaching travel skills. Mm -hmm. I also understand that in the times where we are, you know, there's a lot of kidnapping. There's a lot of fear out there. There's a lot of, but I, I usually say something. Fearful parenting is not the way to go. Knowledge-based parenting is the way to go. Are these things ever going to go away? They won't. Would our children need to survive? They will. I remember a parent who called me um, recently um, on during the times where you know the children were at uh, the children were trying to find themselves out of Ukraine. All right. And the first thing he said to me, you know, he was crying and said, My son couldn't leave. The son is still in Ukraine as we speak. 
he couldn't leave the the space because by the time where they were moving, my son couldn't trek far distance. He got tired, and then he had to go back. So he's still in Ukraine. He's okay, you know, being protected. But I would have preferred that he came out of Ukraine. Basic travel skills would include that your child will be able to go from one point to another. Will be able to walk a distance. Is a basic travel skill. Spatial awareness is part of safety education. Spatial awareness is part of safety education. Now, instead of teaching fear, we need to teach safety. Because the truth of the matter is that your child will need travel skills anywhere in Nigeria, outside of Nigeria, wherever. They need it. Let them learn how to mentally map their neighborhood, their skills. I see 20 year old. year old who can move. I think sometimes I'm really, really worried. So instead of, are we going to get out of this place where, are we waiting for, you know, there to be more safety? No. Trust me. Trust me. You're going to have more and more issues that will come up. So your child is actually, there's actually never going to be a time where this fear, you see this fear we are projecting, where it's going to stop? Excuse you? When I was growing up, the, my, my friend was kidnapped. I grew up in a way. My friend was kidnapped. So when people talk about kidnapping, I'm a bit, um, maybe I'm not a bit, um, you know, I grew up in, a, in an environment where kidnapping was a thing growing up. <coughs> Excuse me. Yet we're allowed to actually do quite a lot of things. So instead of that, I was almost kidnapped myself growing up. <laughs> what saved me was basic travel skills. Basic travel skills. Just remember that story. That's a good version. Remind me, I'll tell you the story. Basic travel skills. So what if you are not there? How is your child going to survive? I've asked this question a lot of times. Our children are rather a burden that they are value, valuable people. I've said over and again that purpose, for you to raise a child who will find purpose, the child will need to be valuable because purpose is about value. If you raise a child that is not valuable, they can't find purpose. What are you talking about? Purpose is about giving value. That's what it's about. So if your child can't give value, there's something wrong with it. If you are afraid that your children are going to travel by, by road, put them on air. If you are afraid they are going to travel, let them even go on your neighborhood. That do, if I say what I say in the inner circle now, a lot of parents are going to fight in their brain. So I'll leave it. But remember that your children will need to learn basic travel skills. Travel skills will, will include mentally mapping out their area, their neighborhood, their schools, using the maps, using GPS. I taught my children how to use the map from age six. How to use GPS. I want you to even understand what is happening to you. I usually humorously say that many children, when their parents, when their mothers die and they get into a home and it's a stepmother that gets in, they become a body to the, to the woman. You need to think, are my children a body? Are my children a burden or they are valuable? I usually humorously say that if you hate it, my children, in fact, you, will not, you cannot hate them. It's not possible. I know that quite a number of times I have shared how my children started to cook, you know, very early, and which is our nest, um, which is, we've, we've talked about cooking for themselves, which are our nest, you know, conversation, cooking. And a lot of people have said, how can you say your 10 year old started your children started cooking at 10? Some people still doubt that my 12 year olds can cook. They are 12 now. They've been cooking since they were 10. I don't need to be there. Safety. Part of safety is teaching them how to use the gas cooker. My children know what to do if there is fire outbreak. That's how to, that's that's what you need to teach. Are you going to say, oh, God forbid, it will never happen to me? And <laughs> remember, God forbid is not a parenting strategy. So you're you're God forbidding. 
God forbid my children will never go out there on their own. God forbid. That's not a strategy. Because if it happens that your children will need to, what happens? I've, we have had the next um, two. Look, I've talked about cooking for themselves. Cooking is very key, very, very important. Your children should be able to cook something that human beings can eat from age 10. They should even cook for themselves. Teach them. So apart from what you know, cooking as a skill, all right, it, it's not it's not something that you you I don't even know why we can even doubt that a 10-year-old cooks. I, I started cooking at from 10, if I remember, or 11 or thereabouts. But yet you see people say, Oh, what is she sharing? That coach, she's just motivating people. I don't even know how cooking at 12 is a big deal. I don't even know how it's a big deal. It's not. But yet it's something that we're having conversation over. It actually worries me if it doesn't worry you. Really? We're raising children who are so dependent. Children who can't survive without us. The other day I shared something and somebody was asking me, do I want my children to live at, do I want to live and die at 33 because I want to follow Jesus is like, are we afraid of death? You will die now. So what if you are destined to die early? What happens? So your children can't, you know, can't survive. Somebody said, make emphasis that cooking is for both girls and, and, and girls. Oh, yes. <laughs> cooking is for everybody. <laughs> My both children can cook. They, they are twins. They are 12. Both of them cook. I will not be in the house. My son is around and I'm cooking. Why? I don't get I don't get this conversation. Honestly speaking, I really do not get it. So when I talk, I'm like, when people argue this, and I'm like, are they from Mars? Where are they? I live on Earth, please. So this conversation, oh, she must be lying. All these things that she just telling you before. Oh, she's just motivation and all of that. It makes me laugh. <laughs> My children have been traveling since age 10 alone. So all these conversations, you people. You know, put up there actually makes me laugh many of the times when I say it. It is possible, very possible, very, very possible for you to be able to do this. Teach them how to cook. In the inner circle today, we have children, age four, parents in the inner circle, you 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 know, right? Age four, age five, age six, who are cooking? Who are cooking? Age four, age five, age six. In fact, recently we have a four-year-old who can fry egg, who can, you know, do... My children didn't start cooking at four. They didn't start. I'm not going to come... They didn't start. I'm so awed, as in as in, awe, in awe when I see some of those things. I saw a father reach out to me today and told me that his children are adults. They started cooking at four. They started traveling alone, unaccompanied, even before they turned 10. I was, I was, as in, it was just amazing. These children are adults today. It is what you sow, you will reap for. <laughs> Parenting is seed time and harvest. So a child cooking at 10 is not a big deal. Don't make it one. It's just a skill that a child, before you turn 12, should actually have. The next thing that your child must have is ability to manage their time. Time management. Knowing what is essential for time. At 12, you're still chasing your children around. Oh, you've not done your homework. Hey, you've not, you're still watching TV for two hours. Oh, you're not. There's something wrong. All this kitty, 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 kata, kata is something else. Somebody's asking, how do you teach traveling skills? You teach it by, <laughs> there are a lot of systems to, actually put when you're supposed to treat traveling skills. We've only even done, so what, what, what we're doing, what part of what we do in the inner circle is that we take these skills on a daily basis and then we build on it. All right? So if you want to learn some of these things, you might actually want to get into the academy. All right? Time management. Your children can manage their time. They are always everywhere. Oh, playing game when they're not supposed to and all of that. Somebody said, my boy is five years old. He can boil egg, he can cook in domain. Inner circle parents for the week. You see? <laughs> I told you. 
So I didn't even break any record. I didn't. So what I'm sharing with you are just valuable. When I, I, I started knowing that four-year-olds could cook, I started, we started teaching it in the inner circle. All right, so time management. Many of the times our children can't manage them because we've not taught them. That's why you're going about, you're doing their homework for them, you're screaming at 12-year-old. You're waking them up from sleep. You are the one telling them, oh, you need to be ready. Oh, you need, they don't know when to stop watching TV. They don't know when to, I, 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 I've moved away from them. Telling you when you need to stop watching TV, when you need to make food, when you need to do this, when you need to clean up. Why? Time management is a skill. And your children, we need to learn it. Another skill that you need to teach your child before the turn 12 is high quotient for responsibility. How to take initiative. How to take initiative. How to actually look at something and know how to respond to it. Very important. Because the children have the ability to take initiative. And how do you build responsibility quotient? You actually build responsibility quotient by being able to, you know, create a system, an honor system. I don't know how to teach this. There's no time. I can't. Just know that you need to build high quotient of responsibility. We've, we've thought of the honor system in, in, in the inner circle. And, you know, that's something that the parents who are in the inner circle get exactly. Honor system. Without the honor system, your children will not know how to actually respond to issues around them. So it's not the fight you're fighting. Mm -mm. We're, we're raising children who actually can put things together, who are skilled. The others are, are sharing all of their experiences. All right. We're, we're having two year old toddlers in the inner circle who would actually now, you know, do poo in their in their party. Look at it, call someone to help them actually pour it. Or sometimes like, there's actually one that carries it to go and pour it because he has watched his mom do it over and over. Responsibility. How does your child respond to things around them? It's, it's not okay to just say, I'm a parent, I'm a parent. Oh, when the child is wrong, I'll beat the child. What we do is that we're waiting in one corner and then once the child does something wrong, you just come, descend on the child, wow, and you start beating the child. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, what? And in your mind, you say, Why well, the other I must beat these children. Why are you people telling me not to beat my child? Hmm? And yet, these children can't pick the pin. These children do not understand impulse control. These children can't manage their time. You have been shouting for 12 years, you are still shouting. I don't think that there's something wrong with it. Toddlers can be responsible. Don't kid yourself. The fact that you have toddlers that are, are not independent, are not responsible, does not mean that toddlers can't be responsible. They can. You know, sometimes when we're not doing something, when I shared about travel skills, people said, ah, what are you saying? In this bad Nigeria and all of that, I know children, 10-year-olds, 11-year-olds, 12-year-olds, 13-year-olds, including mine, who travel alone. Who understand what it means for things to move around and be covered that they need to, to you know, take. Your children from age two can be responsible. They can be independent. Independence does not mean lack of guidance. Independence means it's part of parenting. Raising a child who has a level of independence. It's part of parenting. You cannot tell me, oh, a child cannot be independent. What are you guys talking about? You can have your toddlers do stuff. You can help them help in your home. Another point is how to react. How to react in an emergency. How to react in an emergency. Very key. You would need to, your children before they turn 12, should know how to react if there's an emergency. So fire is burning in the kitchen. Does your child know what to do? Does your child know what to do? That's the question. You are in a place. I, I know that a particular inner circle parent shared how she was shot in her house and her children, 12, 
13 or something, that age, they were able to tie her leg and that stopped her from dying. Does your children know how to react in an emergency? Imagine that these children were confused, were not trained. They would just be crying and this woman would have died. This woman would have died. Why is your 12 year old not be able to actually know what to do? If your house is burning today, do, do, does your 12 year old even know how to operate a fire extinguisher? Uh, Nigerians, they are so good. They, very soon you are going to tell me, God forbid, it's not my portion. If something happens to you today, do you, does, your, does your 12 year old know how to react to that conversation? If something happens to you, you think that, do they know what to do? How to react in an emergency? Very important. So before your child turns 12, they need to learn. What do they do? If something happens to my mom, what do they do? In fact, when she narrated that story, I was, if it, when you read that story, it's shaking. I shared it on my timeline. One of those days it was by a parent in the inner school. And when she shared it, she was talking about how, what could have happened to her. She went in her pool of blood, was dragged. These children were able to, to, to hide a phone that was not taken by the thieves, by the criminals. And use it to actually call to be able to save their mother. You're, you're raising children who are not useful to you. Come on. The usefulness of a child is first to you before even the society. So forget all these what are people saying di, 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 and all of that. Does your children even know what to do if something goes wrong? Or you're just telling them, just pray, close your eyes. Pray that nothing ever happens in our home. Very valid. When you are done doing that, teach them what to do. Teach them what to do. Can they even give CPR? Oh, yes. If something happens. The 12 year old, do they know how to give CPR? People have died in emergencies just because someone that is there, a child who is 12, 13, 14, cannot do something about it. The next thing that you must teach your children before they turn ages 12 is how to understand the basis of what happens at death, what happens at death, sex, and what happens at birth. Death, sex, and birth. Any of our 12 year olds do not even understand what is happening, how somebody dies. They live in la la land. You know, everything is just good and all of that. They don't understand how a child is born. Anything they tell them out there, they just take it. Unfortunately, these days, they shouldn't even read a lot online. So they need to understand death. They need to understand how do people die and why. When they die, what happens to them? Death, sex, death. Before your child turns 12, by the time they are 12, they should actually have a full understanding of these three things. I'm sure, again, is there a death plan in your journey as a parent? I'm sure if I say it again, people are going to shout, God forbid, did she say we need to die? God forbid. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> they must understand these basics. They are basics, all right? I hope you are getting value. If you are getting value, let me see you. Share the fire emojis and... Let me see you invite your friends, your family to this conversation. See, this conversation on parenting doesn't end. All right, there's so much, so, so much to learn at every point in time. All right, so if you are getting value, let me see your comments right in the comment section. Okay, so let's keep going. Let's keep going. And the next one is how to take responsibility for their homework. By the time your child has turned 12, your child should have known how to. By the time my children were seven, they've taken responsibility for their homework. It's not, it's not if you see it as bragging talk, that's your business. I, I, I actually gained the right to brag. They, they've already started doing homeworks on their own. I don't, I, I don't, I don't go there, I don't do all of that. You feel it is fine. It's because there's a mindset. There's a mindset in us that tells us that failure is bad. 
that failure is bad. Failure is not bad. There are lessons in failure. So if your child cannot take responsibility, you are afraid. Oh, I don't want my child to, I don't want him to be the best in school. So you sit down, <laughs> you body yourself. Many of the things that happen to us as parents is that we are overwhelmed with overparenting. Most of us are overparenting. <laughs> we are, you are overwhelmed. You are finding, you are the one, you are the one cooking, you are the one cleaning, you are the one going to the, to the, uh, uh, um, to the market around. You are the one, you are just everywhere. You will be stressed, you will die. I, unlike you, I don't want to die. I like myself. <laughs> I like myself very much. And I tell the parents in the inner circle, what, did anybody die? Nothing. Now, many of this time, many of the times, these children, you know, will be fine. Fine. And my one of my colleagues will say, she's late today. She said that children are the most um how does she say it children are the most selfish people on earth no matter what you do for them they are going to leave you and stay on their own whether the child is ready or the child is not ready the child is going to leave and stay on their own it doesn't matter and you can decide that the child you're going to according to my pastor you're going to be carrying the 40 year old and say open your mouth and you feed the 40 year old the 40 year old able bodied and you're feeding him. And you tell me that there are no rules to parenting. You tell me there are no principles to parenting. You tell me there's no template to parenting. Are you kidding me? You need to understand that taking responsibility for things like that homework, stop, stop doing as if when your child fails an exam, you, you are going to you are going to just die. Why? I don't understand. A child fails that. I'm not afraid though. The, the day my child fails an exam, I have to repeat a class. You will see me share it on social media. Unlike you people, you are, you are living a perfect life. I'm not. Parenting does not need perfection. Parenting needs training. I am trained. That's the difference. You don't need to be perfect to be a good parent. You need to be trained to be a good parent. And in my training, I understand that failure is part of the journey. Failure is completely part of the journey. So your children need to take responsibility for if they fail, they, they, they didn't understand it, it's fine. Let them go back to school. When my children come, when they were in primary school, I will say, well, it means that you didn't get it. The teacher didn't teach it. You can go back. Parenting doesn't need perfection. It needs training. You don't need to be a perfect person to, to be a good parent. Very important. By the time the, the children are getting into grade one, grade two, they should have actually been able to sit and do whatever homework they are giving. I'm not perfect. Like I said, I'm not. I don't know about you. I'm only trained. And that's what you need to actually be able to make progress on this journey. Another thing that you need to do is to teach your children how to start and sustain conversations. Our children don't know how to start and sustain conversations. You meet a child with the parent. You say, what is your name? The parent say, ah, his name is Chukwe Buka. He does not, he's very shy. He doesn't know how to talk. A 12 year old. <laughs> a 12 year old doesn't know how to talk. A, a, a doctor, one of the medical practitioners in the inner circle, sent me a chat and said, Coach, I get very upset when I see 10 year olds coming to my consulting room. Their parents are the ones saying how they are feeling. Why? By the time my children could talk, they started telling the doctors what it is that they, they was wrong with them. I didn't need to. And when they finished, the, the doctor now asked me, okay, so what is, can you collaborate? I didn't talk. Why do you need to teach your children? Why are you the one answering for your child? Why? It, it, the child is just uh, 12. He doesn't really know. He's very shy. Are you kidding? <laughs> you need to teach them communication. You need to teach them conversations. Children need to learn how to make con valuable conversations. At 12, your child should be able to engage an adult. Your child should be able to sit with an adult, look at them and have valuable conversation. Valuable. You don't have to always speak for your children. That's over parenting. I shared recently, a few days ago, that Jesus was independent at 12. Well, people said, no, oh, he was not independent. He was still in, in, in the parents' house and all that. He was independent. 
he was independent. He could go on that big you know, uh, 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 um, environment and the parents could trust that he was responsible enough to actually take on and be on his own. They didn't look for him until they were going and they found out that he wasn't with the family, he wasn't with their friends. That's when they started looking for him. So they could trust him. He was 12. You can't trust your, your, your 12 year old to move from your house to the place where they can't even trust them to even put on the gas cooker. Another thing that you need to teach is that you need to teach them focus and self control. Focus and self control. What does that mean? How to focus, how to self control. And this comes from schedules, habits, routines. If you have you, if you have parented with structures, see, discipline is structure. It's not your jumping up and down and beating a child and quoting uh, spare the rod as well. That's not discipline. Don't, don't get it. Don't get it twisted. That is not discipline in any way. I've seen all the people who claim to be disciplinarians, who jump up. Their children are unskilled, un totally unskilled. They can do nothing. That child is not going to succeed. So if you want to beat the child from here to tomorrow, they don't have skills. They don't have skills. So focus and self-control, a very big deal. You need to teach your children how to focus before they get to age 12. If they are not focused, if they don't have self-control, everything you are doing is blah, blah, blah. Even yourself, even your sex education will not work. <laughs> even school work will not work and it starts from raising children who understand routines who understand schedules who understand structure let there be a structure in your parenting in, our, in the academy we have a, a guide called the structured parenting guide you want to actually build structure around your parenting that's what is hard that's what is hard you see all these shouting between their cheap parenting is not hard. Anybody can do it. Intentional parenting is what is the real thing. That's what is hard. And we're not doing it because we are perfect. We're doing it because we got trained. That's what intentional parenting requires. That's what parenting requires, training. So you don't need to. So when we share things, stop. Oh, all these are saying it. Is it, do you think you are perfect? You think your children. No, 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 no. It's not about perfection. It's about training. When you're trained, you teach. And you're able to actually understand it. In concepts. Very important. And the next thing that your child will need to learn is perspective taking. We have a lot of children <laughs> or adults who cannot take perspectives. I, I say them a lot of in our in our Facebook community. You share something, they are not able to look at things from your own view but perspective. It has to be theirs because they were not taught to think. A lot of us were not taught to think. A lot of us were taught to be stereotyped. And for you to teach your 12 year old perspective taking, you need to start early. Perspective taking would include that your 12 year old, that was a very funny story. A parent in the inner circle shared and how it, someone was telling the toddler, no, saying no is a bad thing. And the parent said to me, Coach, how did we even get to a point of saying no is a bad thing? <laughs> and we actually teach children that. Perspective taking. Your children at 12 should have learned how to say why they said no that they're not going to do something. Why they actually sit back. You know, why they do the things that they do. So a lot of the times, perspective taking will come from you being able to give them the ability. There's something called raising independent thinking children. Children who can think without you being there. Children who can think without you being there. I stopped the, this thing of creating food menu, me, a very long time ago. My children do it. Whatever they create, whatever. Sometimes it's not available. They are able to put things together and all of that. Let your children learn to think. Thinking, thinking, thinking. So because you want them to obey you all the time, they are not thinking. They can't take perspective. They cannot 
Look at things. You don't allow them to look at things from the other angle. It's all about you because you were also raised in that stereotype. It's all about you, all about your parents. So they taught you that it's all the parent is the alpha and omega. Once I say it, you do it, and nothing else matters. So we are raising children who can't think. And then we are wondering why there was somebody was talking about you know a molestation. I told the person I said molestation in our time was a lot much more. Name it, religious leaders, parents, relatives, uncles, because there was no system that actually taught children how to think on their own. And we're repeating the same cycle. Children are not thinking, they're just obeying you, obey me, obey me. Just you just do like you just obey, obey, don't ask questions. At 12, your children should be able to stand and take perspective. And then the next one is, I think, which is, should be the last, taking on challenges. Allow your children to take on challenges. I don't know what the fear is. There is this fear of, I don't want my child to fail. There's a fear of, I don't want my child. I don't want anything to happen to my child. I don't want my child to even, I don't want anything to hurt my child. We go to school, we fight. We go to parties, we fight. Your children, something happens to them, they are calling you. The other day, I saw a university girl in a camp calling her mom that her trousers are tall. Wonderful. A girl in the university. We, we are raising children to depend on us for everything they can't take challenges they can't they can't think you don't allow them to move from one place place to another nothing all you know if i tell you now what do you know about parenting you say spread the rod and support the child because that's the only thing and you forget that parenting is not about sparing rod and spoiling child <laughs> parenting is actually about teaching that rod you're talking about is a teaching discipline and the discipline we need to start from you i like one of my most favorite quotes is parenting is about you parenting is about you you cannot go this journey a, a novice because it's only people who are knowledgeable that can raise genesis you cannot Go on this journey just thinking, oh, no, I know everything. I just know what it is. And a lot of the times when parents get into the inner circle, you hear things like, I actually, I actually thought that uh, I've, I've arrived and, you know, I knew everything and all of that. That's not true. Learning is daily. Knowledge is not static. Knowledge is never static. We keep learning on a daily basis. If you have questions for us, you want to share them. And some people have been asking, how do they join the inner circle? All you need to do is to put inner circle in the comment section and you'll be reached out for details. If you're watching me right on our YouTube channel, all you would need to do, all you will need to do on our YouTube channel, if you are watching me, is to take the number that is right um, below and then send to send them um, details whatsapp chat and send details to the team all right to be able to answer you all right but if you want to join the inner circle you're watching me on facebook all you need to do is to put inner circle join the waiting list you can't join in now you can't join in now you can only join the inner circle waiting list and wait till december 2022 december 1st that's the next time that's the next time that we're starting, you know, the Inner Circle program um, for the year 2023. And for those that are asking, I wanted to share um, some of the books that we have. I'm hoping that we have, I'm hoping that we have all of them here. All right. And the Inner Circle is not a free program, okay, for, the, for your information and necessary action, okay? Inner Circle is not a free program. No, it is for parents who are willing and ready to work this journey and it's paid for all right it's paid for the inner circle is fifty thousand naira every year for now because we are reviewing that fees as soon as the break is over we are reviewing it but if you book a slot with five thousand naira now 
to 5,000 naira now, you will be able to get access to pay the old fee. So you don't need to pay all of the 50,000 naira now, but you need to book a slot now. If you book a slot now, it means that you're going to get access. Another reason why you need to book a slot now is, um, um, is that currently we have over a thousand parents. We can't take everybody. We would need to gradually, gradually, you know, um, put a lot of people you know, out because just like we did last year, we couldn't take everybody. But if you book a slot, slot now, you are sure of getting into the inner circle. Most of what, you know, um, I shared with you, it's just a tip of the iceberg. I shared about the principles of honor. I shared about, you know, um, creating an honor system in your home. I shared about quite a number of things. Most of those things, the parents in the inner circle are able to internalize it because they understand. So what you're learning is just bits and pieces, tips and hacks. And parenting isn't about tips and hacks. Trust me. Parenting is about a process. All right. So if you want to be part of the inner circle, you book a slot today for 5,000 Naira before we do the reviews. The reviews are going to come up by Monday. Yeah. Uh, where we're still doing a lot of finishing touches and all of that. The review in the fee, the moment is it comes up, if you do not have a slot, you pay the new fee. But the current fee is 50,000 Naira per year and for 5,000 Naira for a booking, a booking, right? Once you book with 5,000 Naira, you can pay your fee, you know, in installment before we start on the 1st of December. But just know that before the 1st of December, you must have completed your fee, all right? The Inner Cycle is Parenting Masterclass Program. You read... You implement, you do exams too. If you fail exam, you will repeat. Oh, oh yes, Omolala, thank you for that. <laughs> it's it's not it's not it's not you know such not a joke. So we have books, working your child to property, um, resolving resolving sibling rivalry, the discipline that works, connect to correct, from yelling to calm. You actually want to get these books, all right? You actually want to get these books and start your journey. You can find them. On YouTube, you can on um, Amazon, you can find them on um, in Nigeria as well. All right, on a seller, this thing you can buy hard copies if you want. Somebody say, how does the inner circle work for those who are new? It's a it's an it's a yearly program, right? Somebody said the inner circle is a restful restful place to be. Oh yes, I agree. It's a yearly one year program. The inner circle takes you through all of these things you are hearing in bits and pieces. Teach time management. Teach their bits and pieces. We are actually able to break down what we are teaching. So we're saying teach time management how. So in the inner circle, we're able to actually, you know, give you teach essentialism. So, so when we talk about time management, people think, oh, yes, it's just time management and all of that. There's a lot of time management. All right. So um, um, SCN, yes, there is a there is a the, the team will respond to you. How much is yelling to come? 3,500. That's how much we sell from yelling to come, all right? Um, that's in that range. And um, Slim said, wow, my first time watching you live on Facebook. I really enjoy every bit of your teaching. Thanks, ma. It's really eye-opening. Thank you so much for that. Um, the Inner Circle is a new peace passport. <laughs> Thank you, Ella. All right. So the Inner Circle would actually help you a lot to conceptualize whatever it is that, you know, you hear in bits and pieces and all of that. All right. Please, can you help me with, with how you got yours? It's on Amazon. Once you put up on Amazon, you put Wendy Ologe, you will see all of my books on Amazon. We have over 30 books on Amazon currently. All right. Parenting is hard work. We work hard in the inner circle and the results are amazing. The results are amazing. If you get into the inner circle, you will understand a lot of the things that I share here and why they are, why they are. So I understood when people said, when I shared about, um, when I shared about travel skills, a lot of people came and said, what are you talking about? Travel skills in this bad Nigeria. The parents in the inner circle were inside their inner circle room laughing because most of them have gotten to the place in four months where they were, you know, able to actually put quite a lot and the children are doing so, so well. Some people I know, the children, you know, walk to school, walk back in the same country where we're all afraid. All right. So the fact that, you know, I usually say something just like when we say, oh, Nigeria, people are suffering. And all that. There are also people who are, who are not suffering. Unquote. All right. That's, you know, in, 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 in context. Right. So you, you need to actually become you need to actually put process. It's not enough for you to just say, oh, I heard it. If you do it in bits and pieces, it might actually even confuse you the more. 
I shared like four, you know, concepts here. And all of those cons four concepts were are actually, um, are actually um, a, a, just a piece in all of the things, the subject, the, 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 the bigger curriculum that we share in the inner circle. Now, like I talked about resilience. Resilience is actually a whole topic, how to teach resilience. Time management. When people talk about time management, somebody talked about um, um, what's it called? Um, um, double double taxing or doing things all at the same time. And you know, I've thought that we've thought that elaborately in the inner circle. And why you should or shouldn't. And so these are some of the conversations. All right. How do I go about it? Just look at the number. If you're watching me on YouTube, look at the number on WhatsApp. And if you're on your Telegram channel, we're gonna send you details on how to book a slot for the inner circle, all right, and be part of the waiting list. Multitasking, yeah, multitasking. Thank you so much for that. Multitasking. We've, we've taught elaborately on multitasking, elaborately, and the parents in the inner circle know I'm smiling. All right, there's a lot of erroneous teaching. There's a lot of, you know, things and all of that, but I will leave it there, all right? I will, <laughs> I will, I will leave it there. So send, send us a chat. This is also my first time watching you. I'm so glad I was invited. The teachings are value packed. Thanks a lot, Ma. Wouldn't advise anyone to take anything you give out for granted. Thank you, Sayo. Sayo, I don't know how to pronounce that, but I'm really grateful. Um, thank you. It's my first time of watching you. I love this. Thanks for the lady who invited me. You know, somebody um, sent me money because her, her, grandma, her mother in law invited her to the community and she met me. She's already in the waiting list for the inner circle. And she said, you don't know what you've done for me. So she bought her mother-in-law gifts. You don't even know what you, you are doing for people for inviting them to come and learn. So invite them to come and learn. Oh, yes, choose your heart. Parenting is very hard. So you need to learn to choose your heart. You need to learn which hardness you want to actually face for time. All right? So there's just a lot to learn that time would not permit me to keep. And then, you know, sharing here and there, here and there. You know, we continue to give you to also create awareness, but I would encourage you get books, get into the academy, learn, pay for courses. There's a limit to what free access can give you. That's the same reason why you don't see Harvard curriculum online. There's a limit to what it is that you can access free. There's a limit to what it is that you can access free. Trust me, I know that like I know my name. You cannot access it. There's a lead to it. All right. So you need to actually you know, get that. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, you are pulling the, the pulling the family from the pit of languishing by force. Thank you so much. I'm really grateful. Chidima. Chidima was my classmate in secondary school. Chidima is a huge fan. Thank you so much for always being here. On the Rita. Okay, so um, Augustine, please um, um, please give some time before the review. Uh, we're gonna try to just join join the join the the waiting list, all right? And we're going to have that conversation. We've been delaying this review, but we're going to, it's going to happen, all right? It's going to happen. We're going to review. The inner circle is, is on the paid for, trust me. <laughs> Even with the review, it's still going to be on the paid for. But we're doing it because we want everybody to gain access. Trust me, nobody runs a membership that runs at 50,000 naira per year. Nobody, search anywhere. Most of the memberships you're going to see is 50,000 naira for three months. That's the least you're going to see ever. So we know what we're giving. And none of them give as much as what we give. And we know it for free. All right? So it, it, it's, it's going to be one of the best things that happened to you. I'm not bragging. The parents in the inner circle will tell you. All right? Themselves. But one of the best things. It's not just about your parenting. You know? <laughs> it's about your ability to handle life, the things that you do, marriage, everything. All in perspective. So... You need to do the time. <laughs> Whatever you choose to do the time is your choice. You do the time now or you do it later. Either way, you do the time. Parenting is about seed time and harvest. Remember that the seed time has time mean. Harvest, there's no time. You reap it. You, you can start reaping your seed time immediately. Your harvest time immediately. But there's a planting season. If you miss planting in the times where you can actually, where you're supposed to do it, 
they're going to struggle. Chidema, we have a lot of husbands and wives who are in the inner circle, quite a number of them, quite a number of them. So shout out to all the men, the inner circle men, amazing people, amazing people, amazing fathers in the academy. We have, you know, quite a number and they are doing amazing. Most of our book reviews are done by, you know, to the men who lead their groups and all of that. Awesome people, shout out to you guys. All right. Thank you so much. Faith said, I've read two of your books. Connect to Correct Discipline That Works. Um, I got so much value. How can I get your books without buying via Amazon? You can, I don't know how you're going to get without buying via Amazon. It's to get it in Nigeria. All right. It takes it, take, get it to Nigeria so you, you, can re, you can reach out to us. Maybe you have someone in Nigeria who can send to you or something. All right. You can brag, you have ng to our able VC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the point in the inner circle. Yes, yes, yes. We got the bragging right. We got the bragging right. <laughs> All right. So for those people who really want to join the waitlist for inner circle, please and please and please, please book a slot. Because once we do that review, there's nothing you will do. You will pay the a new fee. All right. For those of you who already have this slot, the review doesn't affect you. Okay. And you know, um, it's it, there's a lot that you learn in the inner circle. There's a lot. I can't even finish talking about it. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for being here. I really had fun sharing about this today. It was actually really, really exciting as far as I'm concerned. I, I love, you know, um, you know, to, to have conversations, all right. Um <laughs> Somebody said, I put my teachings on TV to force my hobby to listen to you. Guess what he shouted? She's too good, though. <laughs> okay, now, thank you so much. I guess that, that's a, a good compliment because I know your husband. Thank you. Tell Pastor that I said thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. I'm going to be signing out. We've already done 12 hours over the time. All right. Um, you can book anytime. Just that when you book later, somebody's asking when the booking will end. You can book anytime, but when you book after the number has elapsed, we will not be able to take you. You wait for the next cohort. There are people who have been waiting since December last year. It's not because we don't want to take you, but because it's a process. We're not just interested in you just paying. We want you to go through the process and have results. Our bragging right is in your results, not just in the money that you pay, okay? So when people have forced us to start new cohorts within the year. No, we don't. We don't. We're interested in your results. So that's why we wait for the end of the year to actually start a new cohort. Okay. So that new cohort is what it is that, you know, a lot of us are actually um, waiting for. So if you, if you pay after we have um, the number, the required number that should have come in, we will not be able to take you and put you in the waiting list for next year, which is December, 2023. If you're able to pay, and um, after we do the review, then you pay the new fee as well. So booking now actually helps you, right? Between the, this time and the time we do the review. Some people are already, I can see chat. Coach, please help. Don't put the review yet. I'm expecting money next week. We're going to be thinking about it. But please book your slot now. It's actually better for you. And you can spread whatever payment. Your um, your balance, which is the 50000 Now You pay 5000 for booking. 50000 is a fee. Your balance 50,000 naira can be spread across, it can be paid at once, however, you want to pay it, but it must be paid before we start on the first of December 2022. All right, you miss it, you wait again. All right, we're not afraid of telling people to wait, actually. We love it, we we love it, we love process. So, because I understand that if you come into the if you enter the inner circle today, you will get confused, even more confused than the people who are outside. So, we won't even you know let you um, get in. Thank you so much for joining me. Remember to invite your friends and your family. Like our YouTube page, share the links. Remember to invite friends and family. Let them come in and come and hear. There's good news here. I'm not called the apostle of intentional parenting for nothing. Some of us are called. Some things are given. Some things are learned. Some of us are given to actually share to our world. Thank you so much for joining me. And it's been an amazing day with you all. See you again next Tuesday, right? at 2 p.m. Bye.